So right. Luke, you're, you're here with uh, the C on your chest, and that's a pretty rare distinction here at Mississippi State. Tell us about that process and when did Coach Ramonis talk to you about that? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess it was last summer whenever uh, I didn't know if I was going to come back or not. Coach Ramonis, me and him talked, and uh, he told me that he wanted me back, and uh, he said, if you come back, I want to I want to put the C on your chest. And uh, it's a huge honor for me. It's one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. And uh, I feel very honored to be able to wear the C around here every day. Uh, I don't know how many captains there's been in Mississippi State history, but I'm glad I'm one of them for sure. Did, did that tip the balance? Uh, it did. I mean, I, I always knew in the back of my mind I wanted to come back and play one more year here. Uh, I didn't like the way that last year ended. I had a sour taste in my mouth at the end of the year. And so uh, after the draft, after everything kind of settled down for a couple weeks, uh, me and him got on the phone and talked, and uh, he told me that. And I uh, talked to my parents. They were like, "No, Brander, you need. I want you to go back, and you need to go back." You you mentioned last season, and kind of how it ended. I guess how much have you and some of the other veterans on this team, you know, coming back, used that as, as motivation to you know not let it happen again this year? Right. It's uh, it's huge motivation. I mean, last year was embarrassing to this program, embarrassing to us, and uh, it's not what Mississippi State baseball is about. Um, uh, I personally have just kind of tried to get it out of my mind. I uh, tried to move past it as much as I can, but uh, I mean, it's hard, uh, when, especially whenever you play at a place like this, everybody expects so much of you. And whenever you don't perform, um, every, I mean, people talk about it. And so we have to we have to be ready to come out this year and perform and uh, just play good baseball for Mississippi State. What's the field been like with the team this year coming into the season? I mean, last year, y'all coming off a national championship and everybody was excited and all that. I mean, what's the shift been like for y'all um, this preseason, I guess. It's been good. We, uh, we got a bunch of new guys, uh, uh, solid returners coming back that's going to help us out. Um, uh, a bunch of the new guys are really going to help us. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard about any of them yet, but they're going to be some really good players for us. Um, whether it's freshmen, JUCO guys, it, it doesn't matter for us. They're all going to be uh, key contributors to this team. And then, of course, I mean, the older guys are going to be key contributors as well. So, I mean, we, just, we have a good mix, and uh, I'm glad we're I'm, – happy where we're at right now. In a strange way, can a season as bad as that for a program that's always so good almost make kind of a fresh start, which is really rare for this program? I think, I mean, I think so. Uh, those programs don't happen a lot here at Mississippi State. Um, in my lifetime, I really don't ever remember what happened the way it happened last year. So it can be a fresh start. We just have to move past it. And uh, I mean, it's a new year. Nobody, nobody cares about last year. We especially don't care about last year. We're just looking forward to getting on the field this year. You mentioned Looks some of the newcomers. Who are some of the guys maybe that have stood out to you and impressed you a little bit? Um, Colton Ledbetter, a transfer from Sanford. He uh, he had a really good fall. He uh, He's going to be a huge piece for us. Um, we have some freshmen. Dakota Jordan, he had a great fall. Uh, Connor Hyzak. Uh, there's a lot more that I can't even name. I mean, that's just the three that come to the top of my head. They're going to be really good for us. And uh, I know there's more, there's more down the line that are going to be really good for us. Look yourself, last, what are you focused on for this season? Uh, just trying to help the team win any way I can possible. I mean, I don't really care uh, care how it happens. I just want to win. I mean, it's my last season here at Mississippi State, so I just want to win. I just want to go out there and give everything I got every single day and uh, just try to help the team win as much as I can. Luke, the last couple of seasons you're mostly playing first base. I imagine this year you've spent a little more time behind the plate. I guess what's that preparation been like this off season, and I guess what are you kind of looking for? forward to this season, you know, working with the pitchers a little more. Right. It's been fun. I mean, uh, every preseason, every fall, I've always caught. Uh, played first a little bit here and there, but uh, I mean, the past two years, we've really only had me and Logan behind the plate. So it's been uh, kind of tough in scrimmages. I, I mean, I was catching, playing first whenever I could, but uh, now being back there all the time, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I love catching. Uh, I feel like it's my natural position. It's what I'm best at. So for me to be able to be back there and uh, just building a relationship with these guys, our pitchers, uh, back in the fall, carrying that over into right now is going to be huge for us. And uh, continue to building relationships is going to be huge for us. What's what are it some like of the catching? pitchers that have kind of stood out to you so far? I mean, we got Cade Smith. Uh, he was a great pitcher for us last year. He's been good. Uh, KC Hunt, Parker Stinnett, all those guys, all the returners that we have. Uh, Bradley Lofton, Garangelo, he's been great. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on about how, how deep we're Aaron Nixon, Nate Dom. I mean, they're all going to be huge for us, whether they're starting or in the bullpen. You mentioned uh, Durangelo. What's it going to be like catching an Aaron Nixon's pitcher? What's that experience like? It's been fun. I mean, it took some time to get used to. 
I mean, he throws 15 pitches right-handed, and he's like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw left-handed now. <laughs> so I mean, you gotta, you gotta get used to it, and uh, because if you're not, I mean, um, he switches up pretty much every batter, whether it's righty or lefty. It just depends on who's hitting. So uh, you gotta get used to catching both sides of the, both sides of the ball or whatever. So uh, it was challenging at first, but I've gotten a grasp on it now. Luke, you had a pretty big day earlier this month. What's it like now going into the season married, and how was that day for you? Oh, it was great. I mean, everything I could ask for. Uh, it was awesome having my teammates there with me, our families together. It's just the uh, best day of my life, something I'll never forget. I'm uh, uh, glad that I got to marry her, so it was awesome. Well, That's quite question. Behind. Now that you're back behind the plate full time, what's it like being the conduit between Coach Fox and the pitchers and vice versa and working with umpires, all the things that comes in with catching again? Right. Uh, you, like with umpires, you just got to build a relationship with them from the first pitch of the game. I uh, always try to go out there and uh, talk to them, like right whenever I run out there, to shake their hand, tell them my name, uh, just so they can get a grasp of who I am. And then with me and Coach Fox, I mean, we've, we've had a good relationship since I've been here. I know him. He knows me. And uh, so that relationship's good with us. We just have to continue to build that as the season goes on, and I think we'll be able to do that. Kellen, Luke had a lot of praise for you know some of the, the newcomers that have come in, some of the younger guys. I guess who are, who are maybe some guys that have stood out to you uh, that you know fans maybe don't know about yet or haven't seen play yet? Um, I think they're all great. But as far as because I'm an outfielder, I think that two huge additions were um, Ledbetter, Colton, Colton Ledbetter, and Isaac, I mean, they're both unbelievable players, and they're both unbelievable people. And I enjoy like not only hanging around them, but playing on the field with them too. So we got a little bit banged up in the summer, and we're kind of limited in the fall. How would you kind of assess where you are now? How are you feeling these days? I feel great. I'm 100%. Um, I really want to play in the fall, but Coach Lim wouldn't let me. Um, but I felt like I could have played in the fall too. But right now, I feel amazing. I feel better than I ever have. Luke mentioned kind of having you know unfinished business after last year. How motivated are you guys to kind of erase that and make a new season? This yeah, year? I mean, all of us, we all know what happened last year, whether you were part of the team or not. Um, I think that it, it, it's going to help us because nobody wants that that bad taste in their mouth anymore. Um, but yeah, we've been we've been working. We've been working in silence. Uh, I think every one of us is ready to get back out there and prove something. A lot of left-handed power in this lineup already. I mean, you know, a guy like you to have that kind of protection around you, you know, what does that mean for this team to be able to, be able to stack some left-handed power out there? I mean, it's awesome. Uh, left-handed, right-handed, I don't care what kind of handed power it is, as long as you can drive in runs. But having having guys around you in the lineup, it's always good because uh, it's, it's, it's good for you and for them because not only are they going to pitch you, more how you want to be pitched, they're going to pitch those guys more how they want to be pitched. So it's it's always good to have a great offense and great guys in front of you and behind you. Kellen, what is the, what is it about uh, baseball players coming out of the central Mississippi area? They're able to contribute, uh, you know, at this level spe specifically for MSU. I mean, the year you've the years you've had Hunter Hines last year, and of course you got all these guys from Jay and. And prep and everybody here was about you know that 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 area and how they're just able to contribute you know so early at this level. I think it's just uh, I think that all of us around Central Mississippi, uh, Jackson, Brandon, Madison, I think we're all just huge fans. I think it's the dream school for a lot of people, not only in Mississippi but especially in that area. So I think that when we get an opportunity to come play at an awesome place like this. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to waste opportunity. So I think that we work our whole lives to be able to uh, be in this position. And I think when we get here, you know, work ain't done. And we just we want to give back to the guys who came before us. Lim said recently, you and Hunter specifically, kind of working with you guys, working backside a little bit more, showing some power to that opposite gap. How's that process been going for you? And how comfortable are you doing that? Yeah, I mean, it's a. I think it's an ongoing process for for every hitter. I think that. Uh, when a hitter can go to all parts of the field, I think that's when they're best. So, um, you know, all the time it's not going to feel feel great to go all the field. You kind of just got to get in there and compete sometimes. But uh, this fall, you know, being injured, I, I got a I got a bunch more time to work on some small things. So I think it was really good for me. What's it mean for some of you older guys, you know, that have been around Luke for a few years now to you know see him get the the captain patch this year? It's awesome because I think. 
that, that he deserves it. I think that he's the, the face of Mississippi State baseball and what we stand for. I think he's the guy that not only the younger guys, but older guys like me, I think we all look up to him. So having him back and having him literally like framed as the leader of our team, I think that's awesome. What have you seen from some of the newcomers on this pitching staff, and what do you think they could bring to the table? I think they're nasty. I think uh, um, I think everybody else going to have a hard time hitting them. Uh, I haven't I haven't faced them yet, obviously, because because uh, I didn't get to play in the fall. But I think it's going to be nice when they have to face other people uh, instead of us. Not naming any names on the offensive side of things, but. Maybe who is the pitcher that maybe your your friends and teammates kind of complain about the most? Who's the guy they don't want to face? Uh, I don't I don't know, but I will tell you this: the one that talks the most trash is Aaron Nixon. He's my roommate, <laughs> and he always tells me he's gonna uh, strike me out and stuff. So I'm ready to face him. I don't get to face him today because we're on the same team, but I want to face him because he talks a lot of trash to me. Last question. So when you hit a tank off of him, what's that ride home going to be like? Well, I'm, I'm going to let him know because he's the one talking trash. I'm not even saying anything. He's the one that brings it up. So I'm going to let him know how it is. You can't talk trash to him about the 2021 Texas team? <laughs> I do all the time. But uh, I did really bad against them, so I can't really do it, say anything. KC, and every season's a little bit different, and every season you've been here, you've had a different role. Kind of going into the spring now, what is your role and maybe how do you feel these days? Yeah, I'm looking to start this year. Um, I know last year I started that first game and then I got hurt, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm looking to start, but whatever coach puts me in the situation, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to roll out there. I'm looking for a healthy season. So if it's out of the back of the bullpen or, or it's starting, I'm ready to roll. How oh, motivated are some of you guys that have been around these last few years to you know flush what happened last season and, and you know make another run to Omaha this year? Yeah, I think it's 13 of us back. and. 30 new guys, so I mean, 13 are they're pumped up uh, to get back out here and kind of prove that last year was kind of a fluke. But I'll, again, a lot of new guys were they're coming hungry and ready to prove something in the SEC. What was this summer like for you? You know, getting drafted and coming back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting drafted was awesome. I was actually up in my my high school, just running around the track, and I got a phone call that I was getting drafted. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was surreal. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to get back here and try to try to bring this back. Uh, Back to success. Because of guys, year, who are some of the guys, maybe offensively, that have stood out to you that yeah, maybe are difficult outs? Uh, Slade Offord was probably our best player this fall. He's looking to make a big jump from last year. Um, I mean, you got Luke Hancock, Kellen, Kellen's back, um, Hunter Hines back, which which is awesome. Uh, Colton Ledbetter is going to make an impact here, which is going to help us a lot. Um, Dakota Jordan, I mean, you could name so many guys, but Dakota Jordan, I'm sure he's going to make a, a big splash here as a freshman, so I'm excited for them. With the recent, you know, national championship and how last year went, do you guys feel like overlooked and kind of under the radar? Do you kind of like being that, in that position? Yeah, I mean, we're just trying to look get better each day. Um, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but we're, we're taking it day by day here. Um, Coach always preaches just get better, 1% kind of better each, each practice, you know, for, first practice today, so we're trying to get out there and just kind of glued all together with 30 new guys and 13 uh, older guys. So we're just trying to get back to it. The staff took a little bit of a step back last year after what y'all did in 2021. What does the newcomers um, and the pitching staff do for this team, you think? Uh, they're coming. They're looking hungry. Um, there's a lot of new guys. Nate, Nate Dome, uh, Kobe Holcomb, you got Gerangelo both ways. So uh, there's a lot of new guys. Bradley Lofton, uh, they're coming hungry. They want to prove something. And then you got a good mix of older guys that – have kind of been through it, have won it, have seen the ups and downs of winning it and, and last year. So it could help them along the way, which will, which will bring it uh, into flu fruition. As a, as a pitcher, are you jealous of a guy like Gerangelo who can throw both sides? I mean, you got to be, right? Every time I see him out there, I'm like, damn, I, I wish I could do that. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Every time I see him go out there, I just, I'm still like amazed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be the first and probably the last person I, I see throwing righty and lefty. There's always a lot of expectations from Mississippi State baseball, which is why you came here in the first place. But do you feel maybe a little less pressure this year because you've got more arms in the bullpen and you know, where last year things were kind of a little stressful down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of good guys. Uh, I trust that coach is going to put us all in great decision or great great, uh, great plays and everything, just put, out, put us out there and try to do our best job. But I, I think there's a lot less pressure. Um, but there's a lot of pressure here um, with all the fans and all the history behind us, but we know that um, we're just looking to get out there and 
finally get this season started and push, uh, push last year kind of in the past. When you got the word that Luke was coming back, what was your reaction and what does it help having him behind the plate now? Yeah, he texted me and then when I told him I was coming back, I texted him, he was the first one. So, um, I mean, it's awesome having a fifth year back. He knows, uh, I mean, all the ups and downs that he's been through, that we've been through. So he's kind of our leader, he's our captain. So uh, we're gonna rely on him a lot in uh, either pitching or he'll, he'll be in the lineup, obviously. But uh, we're gonna rely on, on him a lot. What did it mean, I guess, for you guys to, to see him get, you know, named the team captain? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I think it was the first first day. I think Coach Lamb texted us and he said, "Hey, this is this is gonna be our captain." I mean, he's the perfect person to be our captain. Uh, he's been here. He's like been through it all. He's our, our catcher. So um, I'm just looking forward to a great season for him. Last question. I know one of the things for you coming back was to improve your draft stock too. What are some things that you want to improve on this year to? give you a better selection next year? Uh, I'd say first staying healthy. Uh, that's always a good start there. Um, but staying consistent, uh, just any like it. Like Will Bednar, Lance Sims, are, they're always consistent. You know what they're getting out of them. Um, so I'm looking to do that and stay healthy. Decide to grow the hair back out. <laughs> just one of those things like I cut it, then I'll let it grow for a couple years, and then I'll cut it again. But just a personal thing. Yeah, but last year, had a little up and down year. When did you maybe feel like that you weren't right? And eventually uh, you went on the shelf, but maybe when did you feel that maybe it was time to maybe take some time away? Um, so I first started kind of feeling not right after the Texas Tech game and just kind of was doing stuff in the training room rehab and trying to get better. And there were days that I felt good and days that I felt worse, but that's the Auburn game last year was when I was knew there was something that was probably time to get something looked at. How do you feel today? Perfect. Perfect. Mark, what excites you about the staff this year? The pitching staff? Yes. Uh, I think that the depth of it, that, I like seeing that. I like there are guys that, I feel like there's guys that are more open to doing whatever role that they're told to do rather than having something set in stone in their head or something like that. So seeing guys that are willing to work with coaches and do things like that really excites me. When you have those back-to-back -back games, that you had like 20-something strikeouts in a week or whatever it was. I mean, what was working for you last year during that stretch with Texas Tech and I, I forget who the other team was that you had in that same week, Princeton? Um, I was really able to throw my breaking ball whenever I wanted to, just in any count really for a strike wherever I wanted to. And uh, so I felt like my biggest struggle last year was throwing fastballs for strikes more than throwing a breaking ball for a strike. And so kind of whenever that – I couldn't throw that and a fastball for a strike, then I wasn't throwing any strikes. So I think that was something that really helped me out. How big is it to have Luke back in that captain role? Uh, I love that guy. So he's one of my roommates. I've played with him since I was 13, and I think he's a guy that every clubhouse would like to have around, just the experience that he's had and the type of guy he is. I think everyone really enjoys him being here. You've had a variety of roles since you've been here. Uh, you know, kind of what's your focus? this spring and what do you anticipate your role being? Um, I've kind of worked as a starter in the fall, but also relieved in the fall, then I close in the fall too. So it's whatever they tell me to do, I'm willing to do it. Yes, what's, what do you kind of tell maybe some of those younger guys about, you know, coming into a program like this and knowing that, you know, like you just said there, there could be various roles, it's, you know, you got to kind of step in wherever you're put. Uh, that's everyone that's recruited here is mainly a starter in high school or at their junior college or wherever. So most of the time, going in the bullpen or coming out of the bullpen. It's the first time for everyone doing that. So it's just to find your routine, get comfortable with it, and stick with whatever works. With the bullpen issues last year, and there was a lot of stress put on the starters, how much more confident are you in the bullpen now that, hey, if I can go six innings and turn this thing over and the game be over? Uh, a lot. There's, since there's guys that want to be down there and they're not pissed that they're not starting, I think that that kind of lets you be on the or in the dugout watching those guys throw. And, you're a little bit more comfortable. Just listening to players, the upbeat attitude, maybe it's sunshine, maybe it's a chance to play ball, but how much of it is just a fresh start for this bunch? I think a lot of it's fresh start. I mean, it's uh, it's been a long year since we finished, so I think guys are ready to get back, ready to get started. We've also been practicing for a couple of weeks just, you know, in small groups. So I think there's uh, they're excited about the next, you know, playing a game today and playing as a group. and and all that, but I think it's exciting to get started and get ready for a new season. A lot of newcomers on this team, whether it be transfer portal or a talented freshman class, I mean, 
what, what's your thoughts on the on the talent that you've kind of infused this roster with this year? Well, we're excited. We brought in a lot of talented guys, freshmen, um, JUCOs, transfer portal guys, such a different world that we're in now. Um, and, and they do, they have a lot of talent. Um, getting everybody to play on one page, play as a team, handle, you know, playing at the dude in the environment and playing in the SEC, there's a, there's a real learning curve for us. So we have a lot of work to do. And I still remember last year, probably one of the best players in the country was RJ Yeager. And he didn't look like it the, probably the first 10 days, you know, just getting used to everything, the transition. So, um, you know, I think getting our guys out here, getting them comfortable is huge. Coach, take us through that conversation you had with Luke, you know, over the summer about coming back and ultimately naming him a captain. Please, Luke, come back. <laughs> so, um, actually, you know, it was funny after the draft. These guys are so invested to moving on to the next level. Um, we didn't talk a lot right after the draft. I mean, I think he thought he was getting drafted. I thought he was getting drafted. He doesn't get drafted, and I kind of had to give him some space. You know, you're, you're pretty beat up at that point, and then we. We just started having some small conversations of, of coming back. I had to, uh, he missed all of last week. He was on his honeymoon. So um, I had to concede some things there. We had four weddings in the last uh, month of December. So uh, Bobby Austin, Blake Loper, Landon Gartman, and Luke Hancock. So it's been a festive time around here. So, but, um, but yeah, that was, that was a part of it. I think, you know, Luke is a bulldog. So leaving the way he'd have to leave last year, I don't think that sat well with him. So as time went on, I think he kind of understood it. And he's going to have a real piece at, at getting back behind the plate, which is his natural position. Far side. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, I was going to ask the same question as Steph, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. Not a, lot of, right. not a lot of captains in the history of this program in the modern era. Why was it important to give Luke that designation? Um, we just needed leadership. And I think that was a big piece of coming back, like we spoke about it. We've actually... We voted as a group last week, and we kind of have a captain's committee. The four guys you've had out here are kind of our captain's committee, and um, I want them to take ownership of the program. I think that's a big piece of being able to, you know, have the ear, ear of the ball club and the team. And, um, you know, when you have a year like we had last year, I feel like that's important. And these four guys have been, been around for a good long time and experienced probably as high as you could experience and as low as you could experience. So I think their, their mindset's huge to this ball club. Have you had a chance to talk with Zach Selman yet and kind of what are your impressions of him as he starts his tenure as AD? Yes, I, I had a meeting with Zach this week. Uh, awesome. Um, gets it, you know, just a really easy conversation. We didn't go into depth about everything. Um, but, but, man, what a, what a great hire. And we're excited. We're, uh, you know, as we move forward as a university, you know, the last couple months have been tough. I mean, I give – you know, Bracky Brett, who ran everything, did an unbelievable job. I, I thought he did a great job of keeping it together. And then our, our group who hired our new AD, I think, I think Zach's going to be great. And everybody you talk to just raves about him. So I, I think it's going to be an exciting time. What's you got your take on how you're going to manage your edge alone as far as fish count on each side? Can you give you 50, 60 from each side? How's you know, that that's work? a rabbit hole we go down every day. <laughs> like, it's really, you don't think about everything. Um, it's 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 not so much so much on each arm, but you have to do every, like some people think we just throw him left-handed one day and then running back out there right-handed. It doesn't really work that way, um, but it's special. I mean, it's not a circus act. I've, I've told a lot of people they think it's it's so cool. He throws with I mean, he's really good with both. I mean, it's just really good and and he and he loves baseball. Like it's a really invested kid who loves to play the game and and loves to work at the game, which I think is is you know for a young kid, he's going to be a big part of what we do on the mound. Coach, you got a lot of staff. players from that Jackson Metro area with the success that Kellum has had and, of course, Hunter Hines last year. What is it about the player that comes out of that area that you like so much? I, I think a lot of it's, you know, it's it's so populated there, you probably get a little more competition in the city. I think they uh, there's some really good high school programs there. I mean, we're pulling kids out of um, some of the better schools there in that area, and they're, and they're coached well, and then they're they're really talented. I mean, we got a couple new ones this year, some, some of the younger guys, but... Um, the Kellums, the you know, like Hunter Hines and Bryce Chance and some of those guys. We we have a we, we have an interesting group. We had a you know I think they hit together the whole break. You know they're all home together, working out together, and um, hopefully that makes us a little better. Back to Jerrangelo a little bit. From a arm care standpoint for the training staff, how much different is that? I mean, when you've got to think about both arms and you know all the stuff that you do for recovery. I, I, he has to do both. It's just, it's just double. You know he has to. Arm care with his right arm and arm care with his left arm. And um, today's like a tricky day. We play two innings. And, you know, how much does he get to pitch in those two innings? Because he has to get both. We have to get the volume right now. The biggest thing in the postseason is getting the volume of pitches up. And how do we get his up? 
you know, when you know what's he face four lefties and two righties today. We don't we don't even know that right now. Or whenever he pitches, I think he's on Sunday. But those are some of the harder things that we have to deal with. And you know, I spent the off season um, meeting with our umpire group. They had to change one of the rules because we have all the pitch clock stuff now. And we go to Alabama in the fall. He, you know, he, he didn't pitch well in the second inning. The first time he gave up runs all year. And, and I said, you get nervous? He said, no, coach, I only got five warm-ups. You know, like he only, so we had to, they put the ambidextrous pitcher rule into the, you know, rule book there. And so could he, we could get him warm, you know. So he has to run out there and be able to, there's just so many little things with him. Luckily, he's mature enough to handle those type of things. Do you know what a rotation looks like right now? Like who you got in the mix? Or is that still, you know, to be determined over the next few weeks? Oh, it's to be determined. I mean, I couldn't tell you one guy right now. So I actually yelled at him yesterday. So we had a speaker come in and he asked how many relievers we had, and I had three guys raise their hand. So I had three relievers and 17 starters. You know, so um, it's a, um, it's every kid wants to start. So they're all, I just told them whoever we run out there is going to earn it. You know, that's, that's one of the big things. They'll have to go out there and earn it. And, and we need guys that give us good starts. I mean, we need guys that, um, you know, the four innings and 100 pitches and, um, and we need some guys that are take the ball and give us a chance to win the game. And I, I think that's a big piece, and we're trying to figure that out right now. I know Last you've been about it in the past before, but I guess how excited were you when you, when you saw the rule that you could have another full-time assistant on your staff? Oh, that's huge. I mean, that was a huge one. Uh, my poor guy, Cheese, he came with me from Indiana. He's out here somewhere. Um, but, you know, he was a head assistant, you know, at Indiana, I mean, and made real money. Came down here, thought we were going to get it in 2019. It doesn't pass. He's had offers from so many Power 5 schools to be recruiting coordinators and everything, and he's held on and held on and held on, and I'm happy for him. You know, baseball was a big push behind the volunteer in all the sports because, you know, we don't have as many coaches per player as anybody else in, in college athletics. And so I know you all heard that from Coach Polk in the past, but it's really true. You know, coach per player, we're, we're still, even when we get this coach, we're still last, you know, and that's the thing that we're fighting for. But... To be able to have Chi, I tell him he's on a tryout, but he's really not. So I said, well, if you do good this year, we may keep you, you know. But he is uh, he's a great recruiter, too. So we haven't been able to use him full time in the recruiting world and being able to have a guy like that out there. So it's, it's going to be great for, for college baseball as a whole and for young coaches to be able to get into the game. Coach, what's just a big message to the team this year, just given the recent success, of course, the national championship, but how last year ended and just seeing the success of, you know, Mississippi programs last couple of years yeah. on the national stage. What's just the big thing you've been emphasizing to this group? You know, ours has been more about culture, about we. We talk about we a lot. We have a lot of talent in our program. Um, always will have a lot of talent in our program. It's about playing together. I think, um, you know, one of the toughest things in this age is playing for the team and being a part of a team and being together. And I, I think we showed that in 21 how tough a team we were, and we have to get back to being a tough team. Our league is probably as good as it's ever been right now with Portal and NIL and all this other. I mean, you look at top 25s and all that type of stuff. Um, I mean, you're looking at a lot of talent in our league, and so every day is going to be a knock, knock down, drag out fight, you know, and it's, it's a lot easier to do that when you have everybody on board. So that's been kind of what, what we've been preaching.